So we start with the five minutes um, and we have it in alphabetical order. So each of yeah, our members has five minutes to present the solution, give you some ideas, which you obviously may see in more details over the day. On, or on the other hand, you're obviously welcome to talk to each of them. As we start with alphabetically, it fits quite well because Olaf is, by the way, chairman. So Axario starts, please. And I stop the watch. Just to make this clear, good morning everybody. Uh, I'm the chairman of the PDF station, but I'm the CEO of uh, Axaya Software. I'm speaking as the CEO of Axaya Software. Um, I would like to introduce you to a tool that some of you may have seen already called made to tag and it addresses uh, the need to create PDF UA documents. <clears throat> Who does, who's not quite sure and doesn't really know what PDF UA documents are? Who's not familiar with PDF UA? Okay, who, who knows what PDF, a, PDF UA is, more or less? Cool, so our events do work. <laughs> so how, how do you make these if you are an InDesign user? So that, that's kind of a big question here. Um, and the situation, more or less, for an InDesign user is like this. Um, and on one side you have InDesign, on the other side you have PDF UA files. So there seems to be a gap. Of course, you can try to get across by just jumping. And a lot of InDesign users feel like jumping all the time when they make uh, tag PDF or PDF UA files. So you could get there, it's possible, but you may also end up like this. Uh, and it could even get worse, because you could end up like this and not get a PDF UA file at all. That's very unfortunate. Of course, there's lots of problems in the world, and for some of them we have solutions, and this is one of those where we have a solution. It would be so nice if instead of jumping around, you could just walk from any sign towards your PDF UA files. Um, and the tool to, to, to help you do that would be made to tag a plugin for Adobe InDesign developed by Axaya Software. <coughs> and what it does is if you, if you just recap what, what PDF UA files are about, yeah, there the, are the files that have a special extra characteristics beyond offering a nice visual presentation. They define the reading order of the content. Um, they organize the content on macro levels, like they have heading structure and so forth. <coughs> they also organize uh, substructures like lists and tables and what have you. Uh, they offer text equivalents for anything that is not text already. And they pro provide decent metadata just to provide access to people who might not be looking at a screen where the PDF is displayed, as most of us might be doing. And the, the ISO standard that defines how exactly to do this is the PDF UA standard. So made to tag would be about taking your redesigned documents and preparing them in a fashion so that you can have fully conforming PDF UA files on output. In order to do this, uh, it does use the, the built-in features of Adobe InDesign, which is create tag PDF, but there's a few pieces and bits missing. Um, in order to, to establish the missing pieces, it offers a lot of uh, productivity aspects like uh, keyboard shortcuts so that you can work very efficiently and very quickly. Um, it, uh, for example, helps with tables. Uh, tables is one of the most hated topics for people in InDesign who have to create a tag PDF unless they are ex extremely simply, simple. Uh, this is a more complex example and um, made to tag has a way to do speed tagging of even the most complex tables where you can easily define sub areas in, in the table and just get it all right. Uh, it uses visual highlighting so you don't get lost while you are doing this um, and it can be a very efficient tool to handle tables. <coughs> also in other regards it does give you visual feedback while you are doing your work, while you are preparing the InDesign files, especially with bigger files, you can easily get lost just in the amount of content you have. So it gives you feedback about the tagging, so you can easily recognize whether you have tagged your headings correctly using the right heading tag or your, your body text <coughs> and so on. It also gives you visual feedback by providing a structured preview of the content you're working on uh, so that you can easily find out whether the reading order and overall structure uh, are what you expect it to be. Um, and then also that's not necessarily relevant most of the time for just German users, but if you go to Switzerland with, with German and Swiss being the major languages over there or Canada or other places, it would be nice to understand which language is assigned to each piece of content. And again, some visual highlighting is offered combined uh, with easy means to adjust anything that's not in the right language. 
Um, and that's my very quick and brief overview. Um, you can learn a lot more about it tomorrow in the German language workshop all day. Unfortunately, it's already booked out. So if you didn't register yet, it's too late. Um, there will be some additional content in the first session after this block in the English language track. Any questions, just grab me. Um, and thanks for having me. So Axayo was very good in time. And the next one is Axis and Jens Kierkegaard will present the five minutes. Well, thank you. I am here to represent a brand new company called Access4 and to actually present a brand new tool called Access PDF. Closer to the microphone, sorry. Yeah. I'm here to represent a brand new company called Access4, which is actually a merger between three companies, one from Denmark, Germany and in Switzerland. Um, and we have actually now introduced a brand new tool to create accessible PDFs from Word and with a one-click tool only. Because what is missing today, I could actually use the, uh, the slides from Olaf uh, last time, but what is the problem with uh, creating accessible PDFs from Word today? And what you can see up here is that quite a lot of things are missing from the tools. So first of all, uh, no PDF user UA support. And just to mention some of them, actually I could make that, that list much longer, but uh, just to mention some, that the content order in the PDF is not in sync with uh, the content order in Word. Font embedding is missing, missing. the marking of artifacts is uh, non-existent, and hierarchy in tables is very difficult, if not impossible to make, and so on and so on. But the solution is here because we have now the tool called Access PDF for Words, which has actually now been shipped in the first preview version. The full version will be released later this summer, but uh, already now it is actually a very decent tool. And I would like to go to show you exactly how it works. To actually make a demo here. And just to show you, that if you have actually made some decent styling in your Word file, you are able to, with one click only, to create an accessible PDF. So if you just click here, start creating the PDF pages and the logical structure in the document. And in just a few seconds, you should have the PDF, which is here. And even if you want to check it, you can just browse to it and just start with using the pack tool, pack PDF accessibility checker. If you join the track C in just after these five minute sessions, you will probably have a more thorough description of this pack tool. And if you start checking, you can see you will have all green check marks in this. So, If I go back to, and if I, I'm not sure how to do that. How do I get back to the slides? So, yeah. And the reason why you can do all this is because everything you were missing in the tools you already have is now actually incorporated in Access PDF for Word. So, in short, using Access PDF for Word is your shortcut to creating fully accessible PDFs from Word. And that's, thing. that's mine. Okay, thank you. <laughs> So the number three is Kalas and Dietrich von Seger will do the five minutes. Yeah. Good morning. <coughs> um, <coughs> sorry. 
I uh, already lost 10 seconds. So my name is Dietrich von Segern. I'm business development manager for Color Software. And I'd like to introduce you into a quite new product that we have, which is called um, Color's PDF chip. A few words about Color Software um, from, a, from a product point of view. We are um, a software developer, PDF company, right in the center of Berlin, close to the uh, Alexanderplatz, to the TV tower. Um, we've got three product lines. Um, first, PDFA Pilot for PDFA and archiving, PDF Toolbox for publishing, and a quite new product, PDF Chip for PDF creation. Um, first release of PDF Chip came out beginning of this year. Um, and yeah, that, that is a product I want to introduce you to. So, um, as you can see, our products are mainly about automation. So <coughs> automating things and therefore PDF chip is also about um, automated uh, uh, PDF creation. Um, but we also have interactive and, and desktop use products. So what is um, actually PDF chip? Uh, PDF chip is about creating PDF and the source is HTML or web technologies if you want. It's a command line tool. Um, yeah, and it can be integrated into workflows or application on command line. So, and why do we think uh, HTML or web technology is actually a good format to start uh, from and to create PDF from? First, web technology is when it's about publishing and PDF in, in many cases is about publishing, that the web technologies offer quite modern concepts uh, for, for, for publishing. So first, um, uh, one, one principle in web technology is uh, separation from layout uh, and design from the actual content. And that allows you for template-based publishing, for instance, where you have a template with a design that holds a design and where you can um, uh, 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 apply the static content or the, the, the dynamic content uh, uh, into the static um, template. And then it, it, it goes even further. You can uh, uh, derive content from a database or from other sources and you can do that very performant and, and highly efficient. So that is web technology. As we all know, our browsers are one of the fastest pieces that you can get in, uh, from software. And then there, are, there is multi-channel publishing. In many cases, it's just online first, where you have to provide your content, not, that, not just into one channel, into print or PDF, but also uh, into, into web, for instance. So that, that all uh, is, are good reasons to look further into web technology when it comes to PDF creation. Um, and uh, in addition to that, it allows you to, it does not require programming in order to actually create PDF files. So you don't need a, a library for that. You can use um, uh, technology that can be uh, um, uh, used by many uh, people around. And that it also, and it makes it easy actually to, to adapt your templates to uh, whatever new uh, requirements you might have. So that, that, that are mainly the main reason why we think it, it makes sense to create PDF from, from uh, using web technologies. So, but if you think twice, there are other reasons uh, that, that maybe will cause problems like color spaces in print where you have CMYK or spot colors. You cannot have that in, in HTML. What's about fonts? What it, what's about pagination? So in, an, in a browser, you don't have the concept of a page. So what can you do in order to apply page numbers? What's about page breaks? So there are actually a couple of questions in this area. What PDF chip does, it actually extends the, the feature set of HTML, um, uh, CSS, and JavaScript in order to support what is missing. So it supports uh, the print color space, the CMYK, and so forth. It, it's all, it supports arbitrary fonts, it allows for, for page numbering, and it supports page breaks. What else? It's not just that. So it, it in addition, allows you to um, place graphically rich content. So you can place a PDF file in uh, your HTML content in the same way as you, can, as you would place an image. You can add metadata, you can create PDFA, PDFX files, you can place barcodes, 
um, you, it allows not just for simple pagination, but also for running headers, smart ML, error handling. Um, it, it is actually consists of a, a, a web engine, WebKit, with the same engine that is used in, in the Safari browser, and uh, the core engine, which is our PDF uh, uh, engine. And these are some, I'm, I'm uh, already, these are my use cases, high volume PDF cre creation, multi-channel publishing, web to print, customizable PDF reports with templates. And thank you very much for your five minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> Next one is our member Debenu from Australia, so it's likely the fast travel okay. here. <laughs> Your turn, Kai. Great. Hello, uh, everybody. Now, as Thomas said to you just a moment ago, uh, we're out here from Australia. Now, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to understand every word that I say to you uh, here today because I know we're out here in Germany. So if you can raise the hand here, if you're not clear on what I'm saying, then I will try and uh, get some sort of filtering there. So Thomas, if you can help me out here. But I will start out from what I know because I did do five years of Germany with a uh, girlfriend that I had. So guten Tag is how I will kick things off here. So if you can raise the hand if we know how we've kicked things off. So first of all, what I would like to say here is with Debenu, uh, PDF technology is uh, what we're taking charge on. And I would like to say that we are actually uh, not the new kids on the block. So I have been walking around and there have been a lot of people here who have said, uh, you don't know who we are. So as we kick on, I'm going to say, here's why. So first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you here for the PDF Association for actually having here. And uh, Rowan here has given me the kick to move along. So let's talk about the Debenu. What do we actually do here? Well, we develop PDF uh, software to help the world grow faster, smarter, and operate more easily. Uh, our flagship product is a uh, developer-based product for uh, a PDF library, and also we have a, uh, a viewer SDK. Both of those are <coughs> available on all platforms, so we're talking about uh, Windows, Mac, iOS, and now Android. Um, the second offering that we have is a plugin for uh, Adobe Acrobat. Now, what we like to think there with Adobe Acrobat is that it provides you with the smarts there that Adobe Acrobat doesn't. Thanks, uh, Rowan, keeping me moving there. So tell me more about Debenu. Uh, established there in 2007. We're actually headquartered in uh, Melbourne. But having said that, we don't have 500 people there all in one spot. We like to think we're operating on that unbundled type uh, approach. So we have people all over the world, uh, North America, Ireland, Slovakia, and also Sweden. Our uh, founders and employees uh, have actually been around for uh, 10 to 15 years. I'd like you to look at my hair. You can actually see that most of it now is developed into that grey category, um, as opposed to when we first started the business, it was uh, enjoying the full black. Uh, we are well versed in PDF, uh, on the good side, the bad side, and on the side that you probably don't want to mention here. And Thomas, I noticed here that you weren't really mentioning much to me at all when it came to that side, or at least not on stage. Over the last three years, we've gone from the very small company to the larger company to now uh, something which is on the much larger side. We've been doing a lot with the, uh, <coughs> sorry Rowan, we've been doing a lot more with the Australian government, uh, moving to uh, innovation, R&D, and also business acumen, which has been very exciting and allowing us to develop our products more so. Um, more about me, I've been working 20 years with PDF, uh, early adopter of PDF technology. We also run a website, planetpdf.com, check it out if you like. Uh, Rowan, 15 years of work in the PDF uh, industry, uh, a lot of work on uh, sales, development, management and so on. Uh, Susanna worked in the pharmaceutical um, process, you'll have a look and you'll see um, we have our um, plugin based around Adobe Acrobat, which is extending and pushing on that side, uh, go and check it out. Lucia, our head development, been working uh, 15 years in the background there, you wouldn't believe the sort of software that you'll see on that area there if you check it out. Now the rest of the team, they haven't made it here today, 
but I guarantee they've sent their regards. <coughs> Thanks, Rowan. So, uh, what do we do when it comes to our products? Well, we, um, <coughs> excuse me, we design, develop, and license all of our software out to software developers so that they can go and integrate that into their software and then provide that on um, to um, people who are then going to make use of that. Our major uh, markets are the US, um, <coughs> Europe, and then uh, Asia Pacific, you're probably thinking do lots of people in Australia make use of those products? Actually not. So we don't find as many people uh, when we walk up and down the street who like to prov uh, provide us with lots of gold and, and all uh, that sort of stuff. It's mainly the rest of the world. So, yeah. 20 seconds. <laughs> So, what about us? Royalty-free licensing, no hidden costs, no contracts, per developer, per platform. Is PDF standing still? Not at all, and neither are we. Have you heard of anyone who does uh, releases, uh, releases every six to seven seconds? Wait. Can I do an... Uh, surely I can have another, another few seconds. Um, our, we have a high level of technical and customer support, and our relationship does not end when the money hits our, our bank account. So remember, when you think of PDF, you don't have to because we do. So thank you. Drop by our website sometime, planetpdf.com, or if you've got something to say about it, drop by, um, did I say Planet PDF? I think I did, debenu.com. But if you've got more to say, drop by um, planetpdf.com. And Thomas, you'll probably visit there as well, won't you? Yeah, that's great. Okay, well, thanks very much, everybody. So we come from Australia to Belgium. Bruno, please. No, 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 no. no, he's talking. Okay. Hello, uh, I'm, I, I'm Bruno. I'm the CEO of iText Group NV. And for those who don't know iText, iText is a PDF engine that is built into websites or other products. For instance, for those who came by plane to Germany, uh, when you downloaded your boarding uh, pass from uh, your airline service, nine times out of, out of ten, that boarding pass was created with iText. So KLM, TAP, uh, Swiss, they all use uh, iText to create boarding passes. So we provide the technology and only the technology. We're pure B2B, business to business, which means that uh, if you're an end user and you ask us, yeah, could, you, could you do this for us? we'll refer you to a partner. So if you're a software integrator here and you say, hey, let's make business together, come and talk to us. We are always looking for partners in different regions. Um, if you're a product vendor and you want to integrate PDF into your product or your service, talk to us and we can talk about OEMs. Now, iText, it's an open source library and it exists for 15 years. We had our 15th birthday this year. So the first release was in the year 2000. It was the Valentine release on February the 14th. And um, iTex used to be free as in free beer. There was no company behind it up until 2008 when uh, we professionalized, founded our first company in Belgium, followed by a company in the US in 2009. And then we made the license more restrictive in the sense that it's still open source, but if you use iText, all the code you write around iText also needs to be released as open source under the same AGPL license. And so this is a business model that worked really well because last year was our uh, most successful year in the sense that we won a Belgium Entrepreneurship Award and we won Deloitte's Technology Fast 50 in Belgium. So we were the fastest growing technology company seen over five years in Belgium in 2014 and we were ranked 28th place in the EMEA region. So in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, we were the 28th fast growing, fastest growing company uh, of, of this region. And uh, it doesn't end there because this year we are nominated for a TV. So you know the Oscars, those are the Academy Awards for films. You also have the American Business Awards called the Stevies. And ITEX is nominated in the category uh, Most Innovative Company of the Year. And Last week, I received word that iText will represent Belgium in the European uh, Business Awards as the, uh, a company that is growing fast. So over all these years, we've seen that uh, many people think of iText as something to create PDF. There are lots of libraries do, who, that can do that. But we've seen that 
uh, our text was specific, specifically used for three specific use cases. One you've seen already yesterday, when Mr. Peters from Zites uh, showed you signing in the cloud. So digital signatures, I wrote a 150-page book about PDF and digital signatures. It's, it's a hit because it's been downloading like, downloaded like crazy. And so with iText, we are also responsible for uh, redacting the part about digital signatures in ISO 30 2002, for instance. <laughs> then the second thing we see is workflow. If you come to my talk at 11 o'clock, you'll see how CSC used iText in an XML-driven workflow uh, for the Ministry of Justice, for the Department of Justice in Belgium, and we plug PDF into this workflow. So, and uh, plug in, in iText into ECM systems, BPM systems, that's the second thing we see. And the third thing is structure. So structure, we've been talking about uh, PDF A level A, about PDF UA, this all requires tagged PDF, so structure. And uh, I'm going to give you a scoop. I'm working on uh, a white paper about SUFET on how to create documents with SUFET. So half of the white paper will be about SUFET in, in general. And then there will be iText examples at the, at the end. And structure, it's not just creating PDFs with structure. It's also detecting structure in existing documents. One of our partners in the US, uh, Global Submit, it's a service provider in the pharmaceutical sector. And they help pharmaceutical companies prepare their files uh, for approval of their drugs by the FDA. So th this used to be vans and vans full of paper. Now it's all digital, paper, digital documents, but still di digital documents are hard to consume it's, if it's a large quantity. And so one of the things we do, for instance, or Global Submit, we worked with Global Submit to do this, is when you have a document without a ta table of contents, we look at the font size of several lines at the font color, and so we can say, hey, this font is bigger and it has this color, this must be a title. So we can create a table of contents in documents that have none. And for instance, we can make test results anonymous by uh, applying reduction to documents. And my four minutes are over. Yep. Time flies. Thank you. <laughs> So now it's Livigo, Francois. So good morning, everyone. I was already hoping that someone else is going to do my presentation as my slides were already open. But um, too bad, I have to do it myself. Um, I'd like to introduce you a product of, of Livigo. Just for information, Livigo is a, a company of the south of west of Germany. Uh, we've, we're around in the market um, of enterprise um, content management for, I think, about, it's almost 20 years, I think. Um, so it's, it's quite a while. We're not, in, in, uh, also not the new kids on the block. And what I want to show you is um, something that, that pretty new from, ours, uh, from, from us. When I, pre I think of me personally, um, I'm pretty often in the situation that I'm on my way somewhere in the world and I always forgot to uh, transfer any money for any reason. So um, the invoices that I typically have, um, I'll pile up on my desk at home and they're good there. As long as I'm not at home, I cannot do anything about them. So my personal vision was always to have everything with me all the time and everywhere where I am. And the only possibility um, for me to achieve that goal is to use modern technologies. Modern technologies, uh, when I'm talking about that, for me, it is PDF. Because um, there's so much fun stuff within PDF and combining that with things like HTML5 and CSS3, you can ha uh, have a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun in, in that sense, but you can provide um, and create user experiences um, ranging across all devices and being consistent across all devices. So we're providing with the Jadis Web Toolkit um, a document viewing toolbox, I'm explicitly saying it's a toolbox, um, to allow creating experiences um, for viewing documents pretty much on any kind of device and anywhere in the world. So how does this look like? There's actually, there is no, um, no real look and feel because as, as I said, it's a toolbox. 
and you're deciding um, how it should be looking like. These are two examples on how um, VPDF or the Genesis Web Toolkit is actually being used um, throughout the world. And very pretty much, uh, in addition, there are many, many more examples on how to integrate the Genesis Web Toolkit. And what's nice about um, the Genesis Web Toolkit, in addition, um, it's not about having only one single document. We can do more. When I'm talking about more, it's about composing, virtually composing documents in many ways. Attaching documents um, together so that you get a, a single document experience, even though that um, physically there are many files involved. We can even stack them um, on top of each other so that you have a kind of a template um, filled up with actual content coming from a different source or doing annotations. Um, annotating a document without actually touching the document lying underneath. It's a, also a feature that has been um, around for quite a while, but it's not well known. You can annotate PDF documents without actually modifying the document itself. So this is, I'm pretty, I'm pretty fast today. I, I was uh, thinking that I'm uh, not taking more time. Um, so I will, will take that chance and just invite you. So hopefully it's going to work. Come and play around with Jadis Web Toolkit. You're all welcome to do so. You can um, reach us from webtoolkit.levigo.de. And there you have some examples of the Jadis Web Toolkit that should be working on any of your devices, on any um, browser that you're actually using. Well, there are some limitations um, with Internet Explorers. But anyway, I, I think that's uh, pretty well known. And it's fully featured. So give it a try, play, play with it, annotate documents, and have fun. So that's my part. I'm 22 seconds behind the time. Thank you very much. Now we have Carsten from Luratech, please. Yeah, good morning, everybody. I thought I'd better bring my own stopwatch. Don't trust that guy there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, five minutes with a solution, uh, with a PDF solution is the topic today. And I picked one of Luratech solutions in order to be able to stay inside those five minutes. It's the PDF compressor, um, a tool that we uh, serve at, Euro at Luratech for quite a while now and developed it further and put more feature. And in the meantime, it's also a tool that is very widely used in different use cases. Um, Luratech, first and foremost, has its 20 years, 20 years anniversary later this year. We are around in the market since 95. Uh, um, and um, yeah, let, let's talk about the solution. And I don't want to make it a five seconds presentation, but um, if you have a need to convert everything to PDF or PDFA on a server, probably uh, Luratech's PDF Compressor Enterprise version is uh, the tool for you to do that. What, what, what does it mean, everything? Everything says all the file formats that might be out there. Is it a Word file? Is it an email? Is it uh, a scanned document of this or that sort? Um, you can use PDF Compressor on a server environment, in a centralized environment, uh, to do that. OK, to add something more than those five seconds, um, here is a rather complicated chart, but um, probably easy to understand if I walk you through that. PDF Compressor started out, and that's what people know Luratech for, as a tool to convert scanned documents into PDF and PDFA with high compression, hence the name, PDF Compressor. In the meantime, uh, the tool is, is much broader from its feature set. So on the upper left corner, you still see um, the TIFF files, JPEGs, PDFs coming out of a variety of different scanners and scan software um, that we, of course, read, compress, convert, make searchable by using the built-in OCR tool and output to PDF or PDFA in a feature-rich way. So we can structure documents with bookmarks and we can um, um, uh, separate uh, continuous stream scans of images into separate documents by understanding the content, again, using bookmarks or something. 
Um, but then over the time and since years now, we added more and more support for other formats like character encoded, vectorized, PDF conversion to PDF or PDFA, office files, emails, um, in the so-called Bone Digital option that is an integral part of the PDF compressor. Last year, we added a, an, an automatic mode. That's the, the name in the middle there. It's, it's the middle ground because we had an automatic mode where we said um, electronic files today consist of of everything. There is a word file going in, there is a scan file going in, there's everything going in there and hopefully everything coming out as PDFA out of that. Um, but it's very hard to actually organize workflows and separate the conversions for different tools. So we came up with an automatic mode, throw everything at a PDF compressor um, in a watched folder or another way to, to address the product and our automatic mode will figure it out what's best to treat the document. For example, it's pretty clear to do uh, what with a word file when you define output to PDFA, uh, PDFA to you or something like that, that's clear. But what about a PDF hitting us? Is it a scan source? So should we rather compress and make it searchable? Or is it a source vectorized? Um, or is page one to 14 probably character encoded and page 15 is scanned because that's the signature page of the contract. Uh, we take a look at automatically every page and convert every page in a highly automated and highly optimized way, including your graphics on page three of your Word file that might just be a clip um, diagram from somewhere as a raster graphics. Once you run it through PDF compressor, we will stumble upon that image. We understand, okay, we could try and run OCR on that separate image. And after that, you end up with a PDFA file that is completely searchable, even in those parts um, uh, that origin from another source. Lots of words here, but uh, quickly spoken. Um, the tool is for automated, unattended processing. Uh, automated, unattended processing on a server. Um, document composing, document structuring is part of it. We have a built-in OCR and barcode engine, and of course our well-known high compression, uh, MRC compression for scanned documents in color and black and white. Um, we combine various input formats into output files, so uh, a page could be from Word, a page could be from scan, and still it is a PDFA. Um, and uh, we do it, uh, we can, you can interface with our tool by processing batches, processing watched folders that we have. You can give us job tickets in, in ASCII, uh, job list processing is what we call it. And new is now even an API to this product, CDLL classic export function or .NET um, uh, interface. It's a highly scalable, highly reliable tool. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> it's a highly scalable, highly reliable tool, meaning you can start out small. Um, we have customers uh, just processing a couple of thousand pages a month. We have customers processing a couple of hundred million pages a month. So it's a highly scalable, highly reliable tool. Flexible license model fits in every project. Just talk to us. We have a fair licensing policy. Start out slow and you won't overpay if you grow over time. Thousands of active installations and references virtually, re no, not virtually, really, in government, financial service, scan service, and other industry. Thanks for listening. So the next one is Uwe from SEAL Systems. Okay. Uber. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we heard a lot of, lot of uh, convert solutions, convert products. Um, we also provide uh, solutions and, and service for automatic conversions. Um, that's why I picked out a little bit different uh, solution uh, from our point of view, an integration of uh, digital rights management. Um, I Told, uh, I spoke yesterday already about a project at uh, GEA, a German company. I would like to look a bit, little bit uh, behind the scenes in, in this uh, speech. Um, at first, the problem may be that somebody knows that, that miracle. Uh, some years ago, uh, Pierce, a new car from a Far East uh, car producer, uh, unfortunately, looks like uh, a famous German car and uh, BMW tried to um, get the right to, to put that, that car out of the German market, it, it works, but uh, the question is how could that be uh, that a Far East company could pr 
could use uh, by, by miracle just the same car like a German one. Uh, maybe that it uh, was uh, they were able to steal some some documents. Um, that's what BMW thought. And uh, what could we do against stealing document? Uh, we have to secure these documents. Uh, we know uh, that uh, not allowed in PDFA to put any security on documents. Uh, that's why we uh, always uh, tell to our customers uh, distinguish between your own storage and the documents we uh, you uh, deliver to your to your customers or, or uh, partner companies. Um, use PDFA inside your company, and if you have to distribute these documents, put uh, or add any security on these documents. Um, I showed already yesterday that that picture. Um, you have to distinguish between your uh, own storage uh, on the upper left corner, uh, ERP systems, ECM or CRM systems should uh, carry uh, PDFA files, of course. And uh, if you uh, distribute these documents to other companies, to other um, recipients, uh, add security that uh, you have the control that, that the, the really recipients uh, receive these documents and nobody uh, else could, could view your uh, um, knowledge reach documents. Um, even if you have uh, added your security, your um, user rules and so on on your uh, document management system like, like DMS, uh, there are always some, some holes in, in your document management. Um, if you print, view, download or email documents, you will give these documents out of your control. And uh, the question is, how could uh, you add security? Um, this is also a very, very difficult diagram. I want to try to explain it. Um, the upper uh, rectangle is, is such like in like a shell around your document management system. Uh, if you want to distribute documents, um, we will check uh, whether these documents should uh, have added some security or even not. Um, we distinguish by user, by recipients, by documents, by workflow, um, and so on. And um, take these documents uh, on our server in the middle rectangle, the DPF for convert. This is just our server for making conversions. We also could <coughs> convert uh, different uh, vector or raster files. We could uh, also convert Office and uh, CAD drawings into PDFA, for instance. And what we do in, in this case is to um, take the Adobe Lifecycle server for um, for digital rights management at, at security. So the document comes back as some kind of like secure PDF and could uh, distribute it to the recipients. So and uh, just as uh, to make a conclusion the same like, like yesterday, it's necessary to put a, some kind of fence around your documents even you distribute it and uh, which this may be a fence for your documents um, at security by uh, the use of a digital rights management. Thank you very much. Perfect timing, <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> Last but not, but not least.
Um, my name is Joss Vernon. Um, I'm here on behalf of WebCQ. We make um, a product called ABC PDF. Um, we've been around for quite a long time. Um, I've been doing this kind of thing since the um, 90s. Um, ABC PDF itself is probably about 12 years old now. Um, it's a PDF library for creating um, documents under, under .NET. Um, it's based on a, a PostScript library, which is even more, it's been under continuous development for something like 20 years now. So it's quite a mature project. Um, so because it's been around for such a long time, it's got past that stage where people talk about whether it's going to be appending or stitching documents or whether the documents will be constructed in a particular way or whether they'll have uh, particular kinds of form fields on them. It's moved on really to a stage where we did that quite a long time ago and it's quite a mature uh, product and we're into the things which are more esoteric and more interesting. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of the things it does because there are quite a lot of them, but I'll try and describe some of the things that people like and some of the things that I particularly like as well. Um, so one of the things that is quite popular with our clients are our, our HTML engines, um, because quite early on, people started asking us to turn their web pages into PDFs. Um, as a result, what we did is we thought, well, it's all very well to try and create your own HTML engine, um, but you can only really run, I mean, creating a browser is a major task. So you can only really do that if your HTML is in fact actually personally constructed specifically for your web engine. So what we did is we leveraged the um, Microsoft um, Internet Explorer because we're running on Windows. This is something one can do. And um, as a result, we have a sort of an HTML engine that produces results which are pretty much um, like the kind of thing you'd see in Internet Explorer. Um, later on, people asked for other things. And so what we did is we also uh, then took the um, Firefox engine, which is the Gecko engine, and we created a personal, a custom version of that, which we also use now uh, for HTML conversion. So you can choose between like IE style rendering or um, Firefox style rendering. We have looked at the WebKit one as well, but um, it's not something we've done anything with at the moment. Um, so that's quite popular. Um, other things we do, because it's, we're based around PostScript, or we were originally based around PostScript, and we have that kind of technology, we have quite a lot of um, high-end graphics. Um, so, for instance, we will render through to any color space you want. So if you want to render through to CMYK or lab, you can do that. If you want um, a 16-bit per component output in CMYK, CMYK TIFF, you can do that kind of thing. If you want to render your separations, your spot colors of separations, that, you can do that. These are all sophisticated things that you won't find in many, if possibly not any other products outside Adobe. Um, what else do we have? Um, similarly, we do rendering of 3D images. So if you've seen 3D PDFs, you'll know that essentially this is something that's specific to um, Adobe products. I believe we are the only people in the world outside Adobe who can currently render 3D uh, PDFs. We have a U3D renderer, um, which is uh, under continuous development at the moment. And PRC is almost there, not quite there, but it'll be out soon. And I'm very pleased with that because that's required a lot of work. That's like about, that's, two continuous man years of work for some very, very talented people. It's been extremely difficult, but I'm hopefully hopeful that once we finish that, it will become a major part of our, our product. Um, so what else do we do? Um, other, other things we do interesting, um, people to be talking about tagging a lot recently. Um, we indeed do uh, tagging for PDFs. We try to keep things automated. Um, so of course, if you have a user accessible PDF, the best way to get that accessible is to have somebody to go through it and say, this should be that, that should be that, this is a picture of this, and at that point, you'll end up with a very well-structured document, structured by a human for a human. However, the reality of the world is that quite often, you don't get that kind of neatness. You end up with a situation in which something has been partially tagged, or there's been something that sort of works mostly, but not entirely. And so what we do is we, with our tagging technology, we aim to fill in those gaps. So if you take, give something that's decent, it will basically Fill in, fill in all the gaps to make it perfect. If you give it something that is imperfect, it will do the best it can to make it as accessible as possible, working out the reading order and all the, all the information and put that in, information in as well as possible. But with all of our software, it's always designed to be something that happens automatically. You do, it's not a user-defined thing. It's, it's a something where you, say, you, you write code to make it happen. Um, other things, maybe recoloring. Um, because we're heavily based around the um, high-end graphics side, if you want to take a document, say for instance in RGB and recolor it to CMYK, that's quite easy. Or replacing colors, all these things. Anyway, thank you very much.